Yes, cheers, and welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Yes, we're brewing, love brewing, and that's what we're doing today. And we're brewing on a brand new system. That's right, this is the new, and I say new because there's been some major changes, new Spike Solo system, and it's the bottom drain configuration. They make a flat drain, bottom drain, which has a drain on the bottom and four stainless steel legs with some big rubber feet. And what are we brewing? Yeah, what are we brewing? Ah, this took a while. This took a long while for me to decide exactly what I wanted to brew. We are going to brew a cherry smoked kettle soured blueberry jalapeno gosa. That's right. <laughs> There's a lot to digest. And we're doing it on the new Spike Solo. So before we get going, you know, you know, you know, yeah, like subscribe wherever they moved it to. Definitely appreciate the support. Come on, cost you nothing. Just do it for all the time spent for me building the video. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you very, very much. So yeah, let me put my eyes on so I can see, but we are brewing a cherry smoked blueberry jalapeno kettle soured gosa and all kinds of cool things to go in there too on top of that. And I'll go over the grain bill. I've already done the brewing salts, so I'll put them somewhere on the screen for you, somewhere, and you can check out the brewing salts. What I did with the brewing salts, just to make my life a little easy, I kicked the temperature up a little bit and I just let the pump circulate it. And I'm like, there we go, brewing salts, good. Okay, so this is my maiden voyage on this system. And I've got a lot of concerns, primarily with water and malt additions and yeah, so I'm, playing it on the safe side, and I may be doing things a little different, but like I always tell you, do what works for you. So on the maiden voyage, to be safe, I'm doing it for what works for me. <laughs> Couple things. One, this is the new Spike Solo control panel. Yes, brand new. I'm gonna have the camera running on that while we have it on the rest of the brewing so that you can actually see the details. I'll show you some of the little cool things with it. The pump system, now in the pump system, they have these instructions. You download them, print them, and just really, really good instructions. They show the little L bracket pointing forward with the flow controller. And to me, that was too front heavy. It was kind of leaning like it was gonna fall forward. And I'm like, you know, I think they did this just for ease of view and configuration. So I spun mine 90 degrees. So yeah, it's a, a 90 degree, spun 90 degrees. <laughs> and yeah, it's not front heavy anymore. And this thing looks like it could be front heavy. It's a tiny, tiny bit before you add the water and everything else. But yeah, you're gonna have to hit it really hard to cause any issues. So it's it's a solid piece of equipment and it's sitting there. It's not going anywhere. I think it's 304 stainless steel. So yeah, and it's like 1.2 millimeter thick. It feels thicker than that though. So let me get this out of the way and let's go over the grain bill and then I'll go over the little weirdness I'm doing with the water, okay? <laughs> I have ways to make things work no matter what. But grain bill is three pounds Pilsner, German, um, three pounds white wheat malt. So yeah, I got a lot of wheat in here. Two pounds Sugar Creek Pale Ale Cherry Wood Smoked Malt. That's where we're getting our most of our cherry wood smoke. We got one pound of flaked wheat. We have, and I, I don't put this in the recipe. Somebody keeps asking how much do you silo cups and I guessed from four down to 3.2. It's 2.4 ounces of rice hulls, 2.4. Your solo cups may vary because I have some other ones of different colors that aren't quite as big. They look as big, but they're not. So 2.4 ounces and I put three cups worth. So you can, what is that? Six, 7.2 ounces of rice hulls. And I only have two big containers like this. Ugh with the grains and I've already mixed everything up, ripped the rice hulls in there. So we should be good. Now I also dropped in six ounces of carapils, four ounces of acid malt, and I'm accounting 3.4 ounces of corn sugar for the blueberries. And blueberries really are not a high sugary fruit. A lot of people don't realize that. They've got a fair amount of fiber. But yeah, for me, they're amazing for snacking and things like that. <clears throat> and then, yes, and then we have a late, I wanna say it's a five minute hop edition, Matuka, 
And although it's gonna contribute 15.1 IBU, it'll probably be a little less because I've had it for a little over a year. So my guess is about a 10% loss on the Matuka. And that's a guess because some hops degrade faster than others. We're gonna be dropping in 28 grams of crushed coriander seed at five minutes with the Matuka. And I'm going to be dropping in, and I'm thinking about doing it at 10 instead of five, some cherry smoked. <laughs> I'm going cherry smoked everywhere. Cherry smoked sea salt. And we're only talking 10 grams. The jalapenos, I haven't fully decided. I have someone who's my wife ordering some jalapenos for me. I went to a local brewery recently and they make an amazing beer, which I'll be doing a review on here soon. And it is a pineapple hibiscus jalapeno sour. I'm not a big sour fan, but this thing's amazing. And it's got tons of jalapeno and jalapeno smell. Zero heat. Yes, you heard me, zero heat. And I talked to them and they kind of told me kind of what they do. So I'm gonna try it, see if I can kill the heat and just add the flavor and get that aroma. That's really what I'm shooting for. So, and I've learned with jalapenos from food, We'll add them in the boil and we'll add them just towards the end. And then we'll, we, we will remove them because I really don't want the heat. I just want the jalapeno flavor and I want it to stand out and I want the aroma, but I don't want the, yes, that's right, the heat. So I've got everything going. I've even preheated it, which actually I forgot. We are going to do a step mash. I am going to do 138 for 30 minutes. Then we're going to go to 149 for 50. I could have done 45, it'd been fine. And then 168 for 10 minutes. We'll bring it up to a boil for about, say, five minutes, just enough to really kill everything in there. Then we've got some lactose to pitch, so I get a little bit faster souring, and we're gonna seal it all up, cover it up. I'm debating between doing it in this system or moving it to a just a pot. <sighs> Let's get mashed in. Okay, we're looking to mash in at 138. We're at 136, and as soon as we hit 136, the heating element gonna slow down. And I think it's trying to intentionally not overshoot, which is cool. I'm not doing anything. It's doing it on its own, which is really cool. I'm impressed. So let's go ahead and get mashed in. I think we'll use this side first because I see more rice holes mixed in, but you know, it's just a visual thing. Okay, you know what? I've never done this. So I'm already finding out issues. Me setting that up there is doing nothing but getting in my way. So let's take a look at everything. Looks good. I may need to add some more water back, but we will see. And here we go. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the pump on so you can see how this works. And this is our flow control. I turn the pump on, come up here. And yes, it's a little more angled because of, I'm trying to make sure you can see everything. Um, actually, that's pretty decent. I can crank it up if I really wanted to, but we don't want to get a stuck, stuck mash if I can speak. That's good enough, I think. I'm gonna reduce it a little bit more. I like that. And I know some of you are thinking, well, wait a minute, it's got a sprinkle all over it. No, as long as the mash isn't compressed and you're keeping about a half inch, maybe an inch above, sometimes more, as long as it's flowing through. That's the key, is that it's flowing through, okay? I don't really want to disturb this, but a little trick, of course, is you can push it down in there. It's a little snug, but it's not compressed. Yeah, it's not compressed. I'm all good. Just checking. Because if it is, it'll, the liquid will just stay pricey. <laughs> you know what? It slowed down a little bit. So we'll open it up a little more. There we go. Just want a nice trickle. I mean, that's quite literally, or tinkle, whatever you want to call it. Actually, you know what? I am going to cover it. I'll lift it back up here in a minute and take a peek. That way I'll keep the heat in there. We're good. We'll be here for 30 minutes, and then we'll move on up to, I believe it's 149. I have to double check. We'll be there for about 50 minutes, kick it up to 168, smash out. Okay, we've been there for 30, probably about 32 instead of 30 minutes. Everything's going great. I mean, 
no stock mash, the flow is going. It does, and I've had this with other systems, it does slow down a little bit once you get it going and you have to kind of kick it up a little bit more to get it to where you were, but not a big deal. We're sitting at 138, okay, just jumped to 140. We're gonna move it up to 149 and we're gonna be there for 50 minutes. So literally, all you do is turn the little dial, get up to 150. Oh, actually, no, I said 149, sorry. I have noticed that it seems to show things by two digits. So when I go to 149, it'll probably be jumping between 148 and 150, but I'm okay with that. So we have that, we have that, we're good. Um, I don't expect it to take more than a couple minutes to get up to 149. I calculate it five minutes. I'm betting it's gonna be there much faster and we'll be there for 50 minutes. So I'm gonna let it get up to temp and we'll rock on. Okay, we're still looking good. It's time to bump it up to 168. I, <laughs> about every 30 minutes or so, I have to tap it. And I mean, literally just tap, tap, just, just enough to get a little bit more going. It's, I guess it's getting thicker, I don't know. But here we go, again, all I do is dial up to 168. Hit the button, there we go. And we're at 168 shortly. Once it gets up to 168, I'll be there for 10 minutes. Okay, so I turned off the heating element, turned off the pump, kind of thinking, kind of thinking I need to move that down before I do anything. I don't need to whirlpool, but I'm gonna put it on the whirlpool arm just to bring it down and get it out of the way. So let's quickly disconnect, uh, you know what? Yeah, disconnect. I'll bring this down just a little bit, let some of that liquid out. I should close the pump, but that's okay. And there it goes coming back. Okay, we're good. <laughs> just didn't want any issues. So, and we can go ahead and pour that back in there. Okay, I've never lifted this, so we're gonna see how this goes. Mm. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna go around there to see if it's touching the liquid. I don't think it is. I'd seen that in a forum. And if it is touching it, then I may have to let it drain a little bit in a pot, which I'm gonna do anyways. Not a big deal. Okay, we're just gonna let this sit and drain for a little bit. Okay, I wanna show you how easy it is to go to boil. So we literally take this, change it to boil. That's it, we're done. You're like, what else do I need to do? Now output's at 50%. We can kick that all the way up to 100% just to get there a little faster and press it. Once it goes white from yellow to white, you're set. And it's gonna heat up and it'll heat up very fast with a 5,500 watt heater. I did already run the pump a little bit just to kind of clear the lines, get everything moved. I like to do that during the boil just for a few seconds, just to get everything out of the lines that went in the lines. What I am gonna do when I go to sour this is I'm gonna close, close everything off and whatever's in the lines will just stay there overnight. It's not a big deal. So we'll let this get up to a boil. Okay, it says 210, but we are at a nice vigorous boil and ooh, and I'm getting close to a boil over. Okay, it's a race to get cameras on. And you know me, I'm not even gonna risk it. Get my five, five star? Yeah, defoamer. Uh, yeah, I may have to turn off the heating element here. This thing is getting kind of busy. I'm gonna be able to keep up. Okay. I did rub the bottom to see if anything stuck to it. No, because the heating element's sitting in the middle towards the lower part, but not touching. We go one, two, yeah, it's supposed to be one to two drips, and it always does three, so I just do three now. Yeah, I'm gonna have to turn the 100% power down considerably and quickly. There we go. Bring it down to about 50, which was the preset. There we go. Yeah, 5,500 watts. Kind of insane so there's yeah there we go <laughs> there we go a nice boil without a craziness oh wow that was insane okay i'm literally going to be here for like five minutes chill it down and then we'll pitch the lactose i've got two actually let me grab those i'm a little weird i hate waste so i got this omega yeast oyl 605 it's like i think two years or might even be three years expired. It's very expired. I think it's three years expired, but it's from October. Yeah. 
<laughs> not really, quite a few years back. So who knows if it'll do anything. But I also got this fresh wild brew, sour pitch. This one says that I can go up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. This one doesn't recommend over 95. And this one goes down to 68. This thing, yeah, 86. That's why I said I think I'll do the low 90s, right around 91, 92, and just let it sit overnight. And this is, oh wow, this says it expires October 2023, which was last month, but I just got it. Yeah, I don't know, it is what it is. So I don't think I'll have a problem with it, but we'll get them both in there. Maybe that'll get a nice kickstart on it. I can't do it until I get the temperatures down. And literally just speaking here, we're about at the five minute boil. So I'm going to flush the pump really quick, take about two seconds. Actually, I can do it while it's on. Let's make sure I got everything open. Is everything open? It is one, two, three, four, five. That's it. I don't want to hurt the pump. I just want it to flush it. So I know everything's been boiled. You know what? At 50%, I do not have a, vigor a vigorous boil. I have a so let's see what 75% looks like, since that's what we're looking to do anyways. And we're ready to boil. I bet that's gonna... Oh yeah, it's already picking up. Okay, I'm gonna let this sit for a couple minutes. Like I said, at least another two to three minutes. And then we'll go ahead and get the temperature down and we'll pitch the bacteria, the bugs. There we go. Okay, I just double checked. That says 88, top says about 86. So we're in that realm. And I really debate it. Do I wanna worry about the pump and the hoses and have to pump the boiling wort through there to kill anything? No, <laughs> I've decided no. So I've closed everything up. I've drained the pump. I'm, go I'm just gonna wash all that, clean that up. I don't need it for tomorrow. I have a spare piece of hose. I can let run everything right into the fermenter after the boil, so not a big deal, okay? I don't think I'm gonna need to worry about this quite as much, but you know, just in case, you never know. I had rinsed it yesterday with some water, but who knows between yesterday and today. Actually, I don't even think I need the razor blade for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump this one in first. I should've probably got a reading for the yeah, oh well. Smells funky, that's all. Smells kind of tart. Okay. There's one bug that might be dead. And yes, you can use, what is that, Good Belly? A lot of people want to use Good Belly. Ah, for my first kettle sour, and this is my first kettle sour. I've done Philly sour. I just didn't want to add anything that had a fruit already in it since I'm gonna be adding three pounds of blueberries, I wanna keep the blueberry, the smoke, and the jalapeno all nice and kind of, you know, virgin. <laughs> I don't want other things to contribute to the flavor beyond what I put in it. So, okay, this is gonna require the scissors, and let's, or not scissors, razor blade. I never keep scissors, I lose them so fast it doesn't matter. It would appear I got a delivery. That has like no, no real smell. This is a dry version. Which I've worked with before when I've made yogurt. There's a bacteria used in Russian yogurt drinks that are really, really good. It's kind of like a caramelized yogurt. I turned it into a, a creamy yogurt, which was super, super good. Yeah, and I have lactose issues. Yogurt's not so bad. If I don't eat yogurt, I have more more issues. I'm gonna wash that spoon and stir this in. There's a lot of powder. There we go. Okay. That's good. I'm going to clean that spoon really good, give it a nice stir. I don't know if my saran wrap will fit, but I do have some large aluminum foil that I can probably use to seal up that top really nice. Um, quite honestly, I think the lid would do a pretty good job too, but maybe a little saran wrap in the lid. Yeah. So 
We'll see. And it'll seem like a whole day for me. It'll seem like a couple minutes for you. And we'll start the boil and move it to the fermenter. Okay, it's been overnight. We're sitting. <laughs> I did a couple pH readings. I got a 3.15, 3.17, 3.17, 3.15. We're supposed to be between 3.6 and 3.2, so we're a little bit lower. Um, and I had to do some other changes. There you go, looking beautiful. Okay, we should be hitting 200 degrees. Ah, we're at 199, pretty close. And we got some nice foam coming up, nothing major. Mm hmm. Okay, almost had a boil over. <laughs> the camera's going, it wasn't paying attention. I knew it was coming. Luckily I kept looking, but shh. Yeah. Toggle switch to the rescue is exactly what that was. That was toggle switch to the rescue. Whew, that was close. It's one of the reasons I leave this up here is supposedly that will help stop a boil over if it hits that, but it did stop right at the very top. So we're looking pretty good. I'm gonna keep a watch on it for a little while and we'll go from there, but we're gonna start our timer. So we've got 60 minutes. Oh yeah, we got a nice boil and it is, oh. Yeah, I'm gonna get this on camera for you real quick. That's at 75%. Yeah, 75% power. Now you understand why I'm not doing 100%. 100% is insane. Yeah, 5,500 watt element in this system is like uh, driving a Lamborghini through a school zone. Yeah, it's just way more power than you would ever imagine or probably ever need. So better to have more than less. So I'm good, just rock and roll. Okay, I had to let it go an extra 10 minutes because well, it needed an extra 10 minutes, but we're in the last five minutes and this is where we get to add everything. So I have right here, the cherry smoked, I think it's sea salt, but there you go. So you can take a look at it. And there's what it looks like. My son said it smelled like barbecue. I don't know if I really think that's a good idea. Ah, and of course stuff sticks. That's the way it works. If I can do this without burning myself, probably not. Yeah, there we go. That was 10 grams. And I know from everything I'm reading, I need about 15 to 30 grams, but I'm gonna taste test it when we go to move it to the keg and I can add more. Yeah, you can always add more. You just can't always take stuff away like salt. Yeah, no. Okay, yeast nutrient, one teaspoon, and a Whirlflock tablet. There we go. I've got 28 grams, if I remember right, of crushed coriander. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna drop it in here because I don't wanna get it all clogged up. Okay. And then I've got a hop addition, which is actually, oh, I'm trying to remember my hops. There it is, at 1.55 at 6% alpha, Matuka. Okay, you know what? I think I'm gonna drop that in here with the coriander. There we go. Yeah, I don't wanna pump all this through the whole system. I'm gonna go ahead and drop, ooh, I got some foam coming up from uh, dropping in the world flock tablet usually. There we go. Something just fell, I'm good. Okay, and then we got the jalapenos. Yeah! And it's like, I have to get a weight for you, but it's like four really large jalapenos and they're all diced up and I've rinsed them and rinsed them and rinsed them and rinsed them and I'm hoping I don't get any heat. I have a feeling I'm gonna get a little heat, but I'm hoping I don't get a lot. So, and also I've already touched my eye, so, ah, yeah, we're gonna have to touch the jalapenos. God, it smells good. I feel like I should have grilled them or blistered them or something, I don't know. There's always things you can do different each time. Either kick it up a level or maybe it doesn't do as good doing it that way. Okay, so we're gonna let that go for another four, we're gonna say four and a half minutes. I'm gonna stir it because I wanna get all those flavors going through all that, you know, just, what's it called? Contact time. I want the liquid to go through everything and get good contact time. I don't smell it now. Ooh, there it is, the jalapeno. Alopino. Oh, God, it smells good. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and kick the heat off. I kept stirring it as much as I could because I thought about it, the heating element is sitting there and it could easily burn through one of those bags. So I was kind of afraid. 
Uh, probably should have used what I thought about using initially, a little hop spider. Uh, I'll do it next time I'll use the hop spider, so that way I don't have to worry about it. Or if we're doing a whirlpool, it won't matter because we'll let everything go to the bottom and we'll pull from up here where we're supposed to. For this, like I said, I don't have any real heavy, heavy stuff in the bottom except for maybe some from the grain and the whirl flock tablet pulling out. So I'm gonna pull from the bottom and put that into the fermenter with three pounds of blueberries. Yeah. And then we'll pitch the yeast. So let me get this chilled down and we'll rock on. Okay, you'd think brewing over a two day span, I wouldn't be exhausted. I'm exhausted, but it's okay. So first of all, in theory, we nailed our efficiencies that we were looking for, which were pretty low. I mean, our estimated mash efficiency was only 67.3. It's the first brew, so you know I'm not looking for craziness. But actually, that's assuming we had exactly 5.15 with the blueberry. I've got well over five and a quarter here, so I'm actually sitting much higher. I'm probably gonna end up somewhere around 4.9%. Instead of using the West Coast, from Mangrove Jacks, I've decided to use the Saison Premium Yeast from Cellar Science. It had the highest attenuation, which is something I want. And it adds things like spicy, mild spicy um, phenols, and on top of that, a little hints of fruit and citrus. I think that'll go great with blueberry. I meant to put a little lemon zest in there. Oh well. <laughs> I thought the lemon zest might help complement the blueberry, even though it wouldn't stand out. It would help push the blueberry up to another level. Maybe next time. So, but I also was like, wait a minute, I'm gonna have to boil three pounds of blueberries. And they were frozen. I'm gonna risk it and say no, but here's the problem. The frozen blueberries were whole blueberries. And we all know that all the yummy goodness is inside. So what did I do? I pulled a quarter gallon of the actual wort, went in, used the ninja blend. <laughs> Yeah, I used a ninja blender. And I blended that bad boy up. Took three rounds, but I got all three pounds blended into a puree. That way I can get all that yummy blueberry goodness and really, mm, you know, enjoy it. What's funny is I can smell the jalapeno, very mild, on the wart. Very mild, it's nice. But my whole entire brew space smells like jalapeno. I walk in here from outside and it's just like I'm getting hit with a wall of jalapeno and it is very strong. But in the wart, it's really not nearly as strong. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray that. Yes, I'm gonna wipe it down because I don't want all that crap on my hands. And we're gonna peel that open. This is the Cellar Science Saison yeast. Ooh, it actually has a nice smell to it. Not dry, dry yeast doesn't have much of a smell usually. I'm gonna say it's a little a little peppery, which is kind of weird. I'm gonna say it smells like my dog with pepper. <laughs> yes, quite literally. Ah, uh, been a wild day. So, wish I could get down around the edges here. Let's see if I can try to spread it out. Supposedly, you're not supposed to stack this stuff. There's a lot of yeast in here. I think it was only something like 10 grams, but no, 12 grams, but it feels like it's almost 20 grams. It's a lot of yeast. So I'm gonna put this back on top. Why am I putting that back on top? Well, because I'm going to rinse it off, even though I've already washed it, I'm gonna rinse off the glycol coil, get it in here, get it going. I already got the tilt hydrometer in here. And we're gonna get this fermenting. Once it's done fermenting, yeah, we're gonna move it to a keg and we're gonna get it carbonated and we're gonna do a taste test. I'm extremely excited. I know that sounds weird, but this is about the craziest beer I've ever made with the exception of adding Amoretti flavoring. So I'm very excited. And like I said, before I tell you the title of the beer again, don't forget like, subscribe, keep sharing. If nothing, just for my effort of all the work I put into this. But it is a, ready? Cherry smoked, kettle soured, blueberry jalapeno gosa. And don't forget, in to the AM, yeah. If you like the t-shirts, check it out. Always a discount down below. But hey, I appreciate you. Thank you, and cheers.